Why does Israel kill so many civilians? During their 2006 war with Lebanon, Israel pulverized the Beirut suburb of Tahia, a Shia neighborhood considered to be a stronghold of Hezbollah. Not only did Israel lose the war, it was a national embarrassment. Worst of all, it was a chink in their armor known by Israeli policymakers as deterrence capacity. Deterrence capacity would measure the reluctance of surrounding states to attack Israel. In other words, how scared Israel's neighbors were of Israel. Despite Israel having underestimated its adversaries in Lebanon and suffering greatly as a result, there would be one lasting legacy that they could learn from. Using the Lebanese suburb as its namesake, Israel developed a Dahiyah Doctrine. Following the 2006 war, the Gaza Strip would come under new management. Voting out the long-ruling and corrupt Fatah party, Gazans democratically elect Hamas as their ruling government. Wanting to punish the people of Gaza, Israel begins a land, air, and sea blockade, banning a litany of items from entering Gaza. The ban even included medical equipment such as x-ray machines, electronic imaging scanners, lab equipment, and elevators for hospitals. The blockade also restricted everyday food items such as sage, coriander, ginger, jam, halva, vinegar, nutmeg, chocolate, seeds and nuts, biscuits, potato chips, chickpeas, dates, tea, macaroni, sweets, jam, tomato paste, and other items. In 2008, Israeli authorities drafted a document calculating the minimum number of calories that Palestinians could eat before they starved. The idea is to put the Palestinians on a diet. Despite the miserable situation Gaza was in, things would become gravely worse, as Israel would soon launch an invasion in 2008. And invoking its Dehia doctrine, we will wield disproportionate power against every village from which shots are fired at Israel, and cause immense damage and destruction. This isn't a suggestion, this is a plan that has already been authorized. The legacy of Dahia is that Israel will target civilian infrastructure disproportionately and indiscriminately. The IDF should decide on a neighborhood in Gaza and level it. The purpose? According to the UN fact-finding mission following the 2008 invasion, the purpose was simply to punish, humiliate, and terrorize a civilian population. It should be possible to destroy Gaza, so they will understand not to mess with us. It is a great opportunity to demolish thousands of houses. Thousands of houses, tunnels, and industries will be demolished. In 2014, Israel invades Gaza yet again, in what is now known as Operation Protective Edge. What followed was deliberate destruction and targeting of civilian buildings and property on a large scale, carried out without military necessity. <laughs> As usual, Israel claimed the high civilian body count was due to Hamas using civilians as human shields. Human rights groups and journalists found no evidence of this. Nothing was off limits for attack. During the ensuing carnage, Israel would destroy 22 schools and damage 118 others. In standard Israeli fashion, they claimed the schools were being used by Hamas to store weapons. And again, human rights groups and the United Nations found no evidence. Israel also targeted UN-run schools being used to shelter civilians, including a UN elementary school in Beit Hanun, a UN boys school in Rafah, and a UN girls elementary school in Jabalia. The precise location of the Jabalia elementary girls school was communicated to the Israeli army 17 times. What's more, Israel possessed GPS coordinates of all the UN facilities that it targeted, but still attacked them with artillery and precision guided missiles. Israel also destroyed or damaged 17 hospitals, 56 primary care facilities, and 45 ambulances. Gaza's only rehabilitation center, Al Wafa Hospital, was also completely destroyed. To justify the attack, Israel tweeted a photo alleging to show a rocket being fired from Al Wafa. But according to Amnesty, the image tweeted by the Israeli military does not match satellite images of the Al Wafa Hospital and appears to depict a different location. Different location. Wanting to shield the world from its crimes, Israel banned human rights organizations from entering Gaza during and after the war. But the sheer scale of the carnage would inevitably be exposed, and in the end, over 2,200 Gazans lost their lives, of which over 1,500 were civilians, 550 of them children. Comparatively, 73 Israelis lost their lives, of which 6 were civilians, including one child. In another stark example of the insane firepower of the Israeli army, just one house in Israel was destroyed during the war, compared to 18,000 in Gaza. Did you see any before and after aerial photos? 
Sure. Neighborhoods erased. You know what joke was being told in the army at the time? The joke says that Palestinians only sing the chorus because they have no verses left. 